Hi, I'm Kara. Welcome to Sugar Pea Designs. Today is part of Sneak Peek Week. We're looking at For Pug's Sake and the envelope liner. And that comes with all these floral pieces and these two flags and that word love. And I'm going to use one of the flags today on my card. But I wanted to start by showing you um, this cute little box. And inside I have some envelopes because of our envelope liner. I wanted to show you our envelopes as well, but first let's take a look at this cute little box that I got in the mail. And uh, that is the new box for Sugar Pea Designs. So cute. Okay, onto the envelopes. So if you purchase these envelopes, you get eight in a pack, um, and they're all the same color. So um, I'm going to be using the red one, Heartthrob, today for my card. But this is our little new stamp set, and it is adorable. It's called For Pug's Sake, and I'm stamping it twice on printer paper, and then I'm stamping down on my paper because I will be uh, no-line coloring today. I'll also stamp it out directly so full strength so that you can see what I'm doing while I'm coloring because it's not always easy to see. So I'm also putting some clouds in the sky and I just stamped it down twice and now I'm stamping it down on the paper and I'm not even going to ink this up again. I just moved the cloud and I'm pressing it down and I can still see it up there. And so I'm moving my paper around and stamping the cloud again. And then I'm gonna move it again. And this time I can't see it anymore. So I had to ink it up and I'm stamping it down uh, several times. And now I'll stamp it on my paper and we're set to go. So there's our little pug and <laughs> he's so cute. I have a little dog myself. He's not a pug, but pugs are just adorable. So I just started by finding my shadows, but now I'm going to show you those shadows with the dark color that I come in with. And this is an E43. So I just found all the areas that I thought would be darkest, and I'm putting some wrinkles on his back, and I'll put some on his head as well because pugs they're they're wrinkly they're, <laughs> they're just adorable so I think I said that too many times I will try to refrain okay so uh, here are the wrinkles up on his face and now uh, it's a matter of blending that in to the rest of his body so I'm taking those uh, lines and anything that was dark and I'm blending it out and I'm just starting to get the shape of the dog so he's not gonna look great for a while he's just gonna look like a oh, brown blob but uh, I'm mixing the E40s which is kind of a gray brown with the warm grays to give him that kind of pug variation in color and this is my lightest E40, and I'm coming in and I'm just going to fill him in now. And uh, again, he still hasn't really taken shape, and I've blended away a lot of the darker colors at this point. But that's okay. At this point, I'm just getting a base layer. And that's the thing I find with no line coloring is... I think of it more like watercolor because watercolor is something that you add layer upon layer and it's the same for me with no line coloring with Copics. Um, so I'm going to leave those that body part for right now and just fill in some of the darker areas. So his ears and then also uh, his, his uh, snout or this part of his jowls, I guess, um, and his nose and eyes. So just getting that in there. And for 
finding those lines, I kind of outline it first and then fill it in. And now I'm just going to give it a little bit of that darkest color on those wrinkles. And under that chin, just the darkest areas of the shadows, like his belly. And this will give him more definition, or begin to give him that definition that we'll eventually see. Okay, so now for the darkest, this is an E49, and I am coloring in his nose and eyes, and then getting the shadows on his ears, and just the tiniest bit into the darkest areas on the dog. And then I'll blend that in with the E47, and I'll use that E47 to give a little shadow to his uh, snout area as well. And then blend that in with the E44. So his darkest areas are pretty much defined. And now I'm back to shading in the parts of his body that now can be blended back into the rest of his body. So this pug kind of reminds me of my dog, uh, Remington. He's a little uh, Maltese Shih Tzu poodle, so not a pug, but um, every morning he is, he is a routine type dog. So every morning uh, he wants to get up on my lap and he won't stay there long. We just have a little, uh, little love session. And so he, uh, he picks up, he, backs up to me, picks up his hind legs like he's helping me pick him up. So kind of like this guy, he's kind of up there with his hind legs kind of up further. Anyway, it's it's just funny. It's, it's He's been doing that for years. All right, so back to our pug and this guy. Um, he's starting to get a little more shape and that's what you see as you continue to blend and layer those colors. So this is um, blending it back into the body. And again, I'll kind of lose a little bit of the the shadows, but I'll keep coming back and forth. And here I'm trying to make those look more like uh, wrinkles rather than stripes because, you know, it kind of looks like a cat if you just have stripes. So I'm trying to get the definition where they actually have uh, crevices, I guess I'd say. All right, and then down to the belly. And I'm putting back in those dark shadows. And I'll come back and blend them out with the light one again. And you can see I'm coming in with that warm gray. And sometimes I'm blending the lights out with the E40s and then sometimes with the warm grays. And just giving him, I'm not trying to make him look gray, but kind of gray down that color and it gives a little variation in there. All right, so we can finally put in that little tongue and I'm using R20s for that and blending that back in. And that's going to match our balloon. I have a small panel here, so I'm going to color the background. I'm just using kind of uh, round circle motions rather than going back and forth so that I don't have lines. And then I'll color in the clouds, and I'll color all the clouds the same way. So I'll just show you one, but I'm using cool grays for that. So I'm finding out where I want those shadows with my lightest color. And then I'll come in with the darker ones and, and follow through with the C0. And then I think I even go up to a C1 with that but just to give them some depth in the sky. Yep, there's a C1. 
And that's as dark as I go with that. And I can really afford to go a little dark because they look white in this blue sky. So I'm not concerned that I will lose any of that uh, and make them look like storm clouds. <laughs> so we still have happy little white fluffy clouds in the sky. Even if they're all blended in gray, just gives them that shape. All right, on to our balloon. So I started with a very light color just to kind of prime it, I guess, and also decide where I wanted those darkest shadows. And now I'm coming in with the R24 and putting in that dark shadow. So if you can see, I'm not doing, I'm kind of, it's like painting a wall where you edge it and then you feather away from the edge. So the feathering helps for when I blend it uh, so I don't have a real straight edge at the uh, for blending the next color. And my next color is the R22. And so I'm just really going to focus on blending out that line, even feathering it. I still have quite a line there. And so I'm not going very far. I'm just getting it blended and uh, mixed together and now I can go further out and I'll blend that out. So I still see a bit of a line so I just keep working at that. Now I'm going to go in with the lightest color and that was the R20 and I just filled it all in and now I'm going to blend the R22 to the R20 with the R21. I am very happy that there is an R21 in existence with Copics. It just seems like a good uh, transition between the, the 22 and the 20. Some Copics need that, uh, some don't. They blend better, but I am very happy they have that for these R20s. All right, so now we have the R20 and just blending it all the way out. But of course, I can't leave that pug alone. So we're back down there and I'm working on giving him some extra depth to those wrinkles with an E43. And I know I even had an E44 in there, but this E43 looks, looks dark. And so that means it was quite blended away. And I can't leave the balloon alone, so I'm coming back in with my darkest color again and just giving it some depth and even coming in with an R27 in the very darkest shadows of the balloon. And then I'll blend that in back into the balloon with the R22 and get that all, all the R24 that I just added blended back in. Now, the question is, where do you stop? So <laughs> sometimes you, well, I can keep going and I don't stop, but you need to stop or you're gonna have all one color balloon. So um, here with this R21, it's how far should I go? Should I keep shading, should I keep shading? And I finally stopped, so. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. I think you just play with it. All right, so now down to our pug again, and he's getting some shadows with the W1, which is my darkest uh, warm gray for him, just to give him uh, the, well, to gray up those sh shaded areas. And then I have to say, stop, it's time to stop. So now I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of this panel and put it on a little bit darker blue panel and then adhere that to a top folded four and a quarter by five and a half note card and now I want to put on the sentiment so it's what's up dog. I need to prep that area with a powder bag so that it doesn't get powder where I don't want it and then ink that up with some clear ink and 
this is white embossing powder and it's a fine detail powder so it works real well and get that heated up I just melted that with my heat gun and now I'll adhere that to the front of my card so the cards all done and I wanted to show you the envelope liner that I put in there with that same blue background and I heat embossed the clouds and the hello from that same set in white and it's all set. I hope you enjoyed the card today and if you did if you would like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye!